Okay, we're drifting back towards the delirium. Uh huh. You can feel the comfiness of the sofa beneath your butt. Uh huh. And we are back in the room. <sighs> What is it? Well, it's, 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 I didn't bring anything back. Well, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Not only did you bring something back, but you brought it back in my hand. But I don't... I didn't... Open it and see. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm scared. You should be scared. You're closer than I am. Flannan Isle. Flannan Isle? What, the poem? It's definitely a poem by Wilford Wilson Gibson. Why would you be interested in that? I... Uh, oh, that's a bit strange. Don't ask me how I know this. I have a feeling that the answer to your question will be revealed in exactly a month from now. What if I don't want to wait? Uh, then cross my palm with silver? What? Maybe two quid? Hello. Hi. We are back in the room, as it is Wednesday. We are on episode 104, <gasps> and we are up to the final act of our new iteration, if you like, of Partly Life Force, Partly First Men in the Moon. Mm. Thank you again for joining us, and as always, thank you to our new subscribers as well. You are more than welcome. Please do come back and come back often. Leave us a like and leave a comment and just, just leave us things. And if you do have two quid, there's always Patreon. Very quick shout out, as as is our, our thing. Uh, so today's one is for uh, Nemo's Dreamscapes, who's another uh, lo-fi channel. Uh, they do another one of these ones that does... Um, are like 30s, 40s records playing in another room. Oh, the really lo-fi music experience. Yes. It's it's an interesting genre. I haven't quite caught on to it yet, but I'm aware of it. As a, a help to try and sleep, because sometimes you're supposed to, apparently. But the other thing, sometimes if I'm, depending on what I'm reading, stuff like that, especially stuff from a specific period, is kind of relevant to what I'm reading. Oh, so really? anything from like 30s, 40s, say if I was reading like, like a Raymond Chandler or something, I'd be looking for like... That, like film noir stuff, just uh, have on in the background. Yeah, 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 a bit, bit, bit smooth jazz or something. Yeah, but yeah. So yes, but do check it out again. As always, link will be in the description down there, down yes. all the way down. Act two. No, act three. <laughs> yes, that one as well. There's a couple of bits that we could just tack on to that end of act two. Mm -hmm. just so we're not leaving ourselves such a massive block of things to try and include in Act 3. I loved what you are saying there about getting the image of, of, of the um, oxygen machine and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We'd said about Cain um, being so separated and not being able to get to Carlson. Yes. I thought maybe at this point then what we should have is he gets delayed because they get attacked by one of those giant caterpillars. <gasps> I forgot about the giant caterpillars. Uh, and maybe, How terrible am I? But maybe have... Um, one, at least one, or maybe both of the troops that are with him gets killed by it. Oh. So that means he kind of slots into that Edward Judd kind of role where he's wandering around on his own. Yes, and, and he's getting increasingly... Yes, and maybe he doesn't see um, the Selenites when they come out and kill it and and, and farm from, from, the, from the creature itself. So he thinks, that, again, that they're hostile. Of course, yes. I know we were saying last time about him, yeah, in, in the same way as in Life Force, when he's quite crying out to Carlson and things like that. I suppose the only thing we have to remember in this setup is he doesn't know Carlson because he hasn't met him yet. No, but oh yeah, hey, who was the who was meant to be the team commander on on the Churchill? Was it? Carlson? I mean, I suppose it does make it still make sense because as far as I know, Carlson is still the commander. Yeah, so um, it would be that would be the name that he'd be. He would be calling out. Yes, yeah. I suppose it's just a question of the intonation will be slightly different because there's no personal connection between them. No. Of course, they don't. Yeah, they don't know each other. He's just calling out to a man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, and I love the idea with the caterpillars because um, otherwise we would have lost them entirely. And it gives them a good thing, big, big thing to fight. How is he going to fight it? They'll have automatic weapons. Of course they will. So, um... Ooh. Oh. I just thought we could go a little bit deeper with this. So one of the soldiers that's with him gets killed. The other one gets trapped when it knocks over some of those stalactites. Static, yeah, stalactites. No, stalagmites. Stalactites down. And they're too heavy for him to lift off. And he goes to try and find something. And he... But the, the, the caterpillar chases Kane and he can't get back to his man. Okay. Just throwing this in as a possibility for the end of the film. I don't know. It might not work. But the Sunlight's come out, kill the caterpillar, and rescue him. But Kane doesn't see any of that. Oh. Oh, well, that's a nice little touch. It shows that on both sides of the equation. Because obviously the conversations with Carlson and stuff with the leader will theoretically happen. So they'll have that kind of emotional connection. But the other, like their physical actions proving their intentions mm -hmm. as well as nice. It's yeah. an extra, it's an extra, I don't want to say layer. It's an extra lens to view things through. What is that? Because we're going to get a spinning onion in the room. <laughs> 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 that thing freaks me out every time. <laughs> We then want, I suppose, switch back to Carlson and the rest of his, all the remainder of his team. I feel like we need to have that bit now because he needs to, he needs to be having those conversations, meeting those aliens before Kane catches up with him. So we need to see that happening mm -hmm. now. I think to to make the timeline work. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's a nice jump off point, isn't it? So Kane disappears, they come in, do their thing, and then we switch to the to the rest of them. So all right, just to go back, just a step. You know, when you were saying, you know, like, there's the guy that gets trapped under the stag plate. Kane doesn't see them rescue him. They just, he just sees them dragging off the body. Quote, unquote. Oh, yeah. Gonna up you one again on this. Oh, okay, then. Not only do they, he doesn't not only see them drag away the body. Say they've got, because again, we're talking about satellites in the 80s, not in the, not in the 1990s, in the 1890s. Mm. They've got a portable device. So to kind of protect him while they're moving him. They web him up like they do when they go into stasis. So he thinks they've webbed him up to go in the larder. Ah, yes, that's just even more sinister. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Uh, I come out, again, she's one of the uh, ast astronauts. She doesn't get given a name. So <laughs> would we get her in place of Kate being viewed through the um, the X-ray machine? Oh, yes, absolutely. We have to have that, yeah. that moment. Oh, the Sun and I's going to try and bring either the church or the Columbia down into their galleries. I'd like to say they try to, but that's a lot bigger than the um, Cavorite sphere. It is, but again, this is another point where we can allow for the fact that they are more advanced. More advanced. Than... I want to say yes, and I also want... That, actually, no, I want to say they bring both of the ships in, but in the process they accidentally damage one of them irreparably. Okay. It's just a good way of raising the stakes... Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, <laughs> we could just say, well, that where because where they where they parked on the surface, there's just like a chunk, and that whole section of the planet just descends into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but because of the position of that the um, that the Columbia or that the uh, Churchill has finished up in, yeah, it puts too much pressure on it, and it cracks the fuselage in half, which now brings the entire all of the crew now below ground. Everybody's down below ground, and they've only got one of their ships, and. One of them is significantly smaller than the other. They would have to basically dump most of the stuff out of it and fill it up with oxygen canisters for the trip back. I mean, it's only three days. Yeah. Uh, well, it was three days in the 60s, wasn't it? Y y yes. It might not even be that long to get back. But even so, they've got a lot more bodies to fit in there. So even for the Churchill, it's already more than it's supposed to be able to handle. Yeah. So do we want to destroy the Columbia or do we want to destroy the Churchill? If we're looking at racing stakes, then it would be the Columbia. Because that's the one ship we know that works. We know the Churchill is flight-worthy, it just can't take off because the landing gear is screwed. Which right. is what we said last time. No, we're not thinking about this. When the Solonites turn up, there's that crew that's supposed to be repairing the Churchill that are going to be there. That's not just the Solonites turning up and picking up the ship. That's the Solonites turning up and there's a bunch of humans there. Yes. How do they react? Well, that's why I thought the easiest way to do it is just to have that entire section of the moon just drops into a gallery below it. Oh, right. So it just, there wouldn't be any conflict. It's just, it ha it just happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could see that working. I would have preferred it to have the vehicle that they are eventually going to leave in on the surface because then we have to try and answer the question if they're both vehicles are underground. Right. Because okay. they're not using cavalry, they can't just go boom straight up. 
they need to be able to take off. Take off. They need. They need. Uh, yes. In which case, you're probably right. Yes, they should leave the Columbia above ground. But like I say, that's a significantly smaller ship. Yes, it is. And it's unlikely to be able to take all ten of the survivors currently there. I mean, we can just say that the Columbia. I mean, yes, they've landed close to the Churchill, but it's from ground level out of um, eye, eye line. We have to decide. Because at, at one point we had four or five people up there trying to sort things out. Yes. Are we taking them below ground? Personally, I prefer keeping it as it is. I think we've got a nice number of people underground to investigate that. It should be, they've gone back to the Columbia to get more supplies, and when they go back, the ship is gone. Okay, yeah, we're ready to get the extra oxygen canisters from the from the, child, from the Churchill. Uh, oh, it's not there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that seems... That seems better. And then, then you'd have that moment of, like, radio contact with Kane, the ship's gone. Coming back to the bit with Carlson, that goes on as normal, and they have a conversation with the first Selenite that, that in the original film, is kind of learning their language, which I think we said it right, right at the start of this one, that we can allow that they know enough of human speech because they've been monitoring radio communications from Earth for the past 20-odd years. Oh, yeah, okay characterization do we think that's going to be any different he's not a military man all the way throughout his story he's constantly breaking the rules so we're saying that's going to be pretty much the same yes yes i think so i think it's necessary i think there might be more dialogue because as you say the Solonites know our language so there's less of the learning and more of the conversing which is nice i think that would work carlson has taken away to speak with the big wig. What about the others? When the um, the solar nights um, go into the stasis, isn't it? Hey, the solar eclipse. Yes, I was forgetting about the solar eclipse. Okay, mm-hmm. yes, that makes sense then. Yes, because there'd be nothing impeding Kane at that point. Exactly. Yeah. And then that conversation, I I just I thought you were going to have a kind of, well, are you really qualified for a first contact situation? He can say, they killed my men, blah, 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 blah. You know. Yeah. Because um, he's looking at it as a military man. Um... That maybe he's not even worried about whether or not they're hostile. Just seeing the, the level of technology they have, it's also about, well, even if they do make contact with the Earth, who are they going to give this technology to? Are they going to give it to the enemies of the ground? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, where is that taking us? It's an interesting enough idea, but where does it take us in the story? I didn't know whether there was an option there to go slightly um, Stargate. And say that he tries to rig the um, the Churchill to blow. Yeah, again, where are we going with this? I'm just throwing up ideas. Yes, but where is it? Where, where is it going? Where is it going in the story? Ken believes his mission now is to neutralise the threat before it becomes one. His mission then is to save as many people, get everybody out from there, rig the Churchill to blow, and then return to Earth. Uh, it's not making a lot of sense there. In what way? What, how is that How is that helping his mission to get people back out alive? Get everybody out, let's root the Churchill to blow, they take off and leave in the Columbia, and then, and, the, and the Churchill goes off behind them. So if he deviates from his mission to set an explosive on the other ship, what's the logic? Why is that helping him get people off the planet? That bit doesn't help him get people off the planet. He still has to do that himself, but to stop a perceived threat that he sees coming to attack Earth. How because they'll be blown up. Right, well, for starters, they've got an entire city underground. Blowing up the Churchill's going to blow up a single chamber at best. Yeah, he doesn't know that. He's a military man. It's an idea. Nothing more. <laughs> like I said, it's an interesting idea, but where does it take us in the story? What does it add to the story? It's it's Chekhov's gun, mate. You're putting Chekhov's gun in, but you're not putting a place for the gun to be fired. You fire it at the end, so he's whole so if he goes and sets that up ready for when they leave, gets the others out, they all get back to the Columbia and then they leave, and then he blows that up behind them, because as far as he's concerned, they are a threat. Whether or not it takes them out entirely, whether or not it um acts as Alright, for example, the, the scenario you just laid out only works if the Selenites are chasing them aggressively. If the Selenites are not chasing them aggressively, blowing up the ship does nothing. It's just blowing up a ship. So, where's the emotional payoff in that setup? Even in the original film, all of the all of the aggressive tendencies come from the humans. Fancy at it again. Yeah, and completely irrationally. 
Yes. So I'm looking for something that is a similar thing to that, which, again, there's no reason for, I can't even remember his name, um, Edward Judd's character to attack the Selenites apart from pure fear. Are you, so, saying, are you saying the king just snaps, and that's the point? We could play it that way. Well, it, it needs to have some sort of purpose, so if it's a way of showing how badly Kane has cracked, I can see that working. It could, but I don't. I don't know, because... Kane's a pretty level-headed guy. Yeah, exactly. It's one of the reasons I'm struggling with this. Yeah, I mean, even being out of his element, being shot into space, is he the SAS for God's sake? This might, for example, be an alternative to someone having a cold. It might be the act of genocide that ends the story. That's that's one way we could make it pay off. That would work. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that when Kane discovers the the um, the Churchill in un- underground. Uh, that he notices that it's near to or next to or on top of a supporting structure. So he wouldn't just be blowing up the church or he'd be bringing the roof down. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. We've got something that works there. Cool. So they're, they're, his, it's his backup plan in case of emergency. Uh, but it's a, a, it's a, it's a, it's a nuclear option. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank God we got past that. So yeah, we need to wrap this up because we're kind of like dithering now with, with with Act Three. I mean, so we get Solar Eclipse finishes. That's when they we kind of run into them going to meet the leader. Yes. So in that scene, then with <sighs> during the, during the blackout, that's when Kane takes the other members of the crew that are still alive. Yes. But we've still got to remember that there's one who's been who's, who's been injured who they're treating. So we'd have to worry about where we drop him back into it. Oh. On the way to being taken to speak to the leader. Carlson actually passes through a chamber where the man is being treated by the Selenites, mm-hmm. which would lead then to Cain following his path. We'll eventually see him encased in some kind of um, coffin thing or something like that. And they're doing experiments on him. Yeah, I did have a thought just then. And again, depends on how we want how we do actually want this to go in the end. We could switch it around that that guy gets. Healed up so that he can leave. When they, when him and Carlson go back to meet the rest of the crew, uh-huh. they're waiting to leave. It's only at that point that Kane realizes his mistake, and goes, but it's already too late. So he goes back in to try and stop it. Oh, oh, that gives us an interesting ending. Yeah, mm. and ends up sacrificing himself. So, um, so I'm imagining like at this point, Kane is literally a moment or two behind Carlson. Yeah. Um, so Carlson's has passed through the chamber where the man's being treated. Kane sees a similar thing a few moments later, creeps up onto the audience chamber, uh, earwigs on, on the conversation, mm-hmm. and his brain thinks it's a threat of genocide against Earth when they're discussing the nature of threats yes. to each other, mm-hmm. which would then give him the reason to think he needs to blow up yeah. the Churchill. I can stop that right now for Queen and Country and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And then it's, I suppose, uh, grabbing Carlson and then a mad dash through the various chambers to get mm-hmm. back to the to the others. He's going to set the church all to blow, but how do we get back to the surface? We can contrive some kind of lift that they've... Okay. Yeah, that just goes straight to the surface. Because science, everybody. <laughs> because science. So when he grabs Carlson and drags him out, they pass back that chamber, but when you went where his mate is being repaired, is, is being treated. Mm. On the way there, he was unconscious. When they pass back, he is now awake. And yeah, so, okay, yeah. They're like, sir, sir, but they don't hear him because of the noise. So he then follows them. Uh-huh, yeah, okay. So he's a little bit behind them, so the time when they get back to the Columbia, again, because movie, they've got some kind of futuristic rebreathers that they can just stick on to at least get across to where the Columbia is. Oh! Because it's on the surface still, isn't it? Well, well, they're still out of their spacesuits, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. I was going to say, we never took them away from them, didn't no, we? No, no, no. So they should be... So they should still have them. Yeah, they should be fine. He's the only one that I thought might have been because they'd been taking... Because they would have taken his clothes off to try and heal him. Oh, yes, yes, no, that guy. Yes, that guy. That They would have to do something. What would they do? Because movie, we can have a lovely, like, The Martian moment when they mm, science the shit out of it. yes. And, and just, just because it's only going to be like a, I don't know, a hundred yards or whatever. They've got to keep him alive for 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Yeah. That's all they've got to do. And they've got to science the shit out of that. 
I'm not clever enough to know the answer to that, but we will because science this. Yeah. yeah so he then he's like the last one who catches up, and they're like, "What the hell? We thought you were dead." No, no, no. They, look, they, my leg's better. Blah 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 blah. And as I said, Kane's like, "We've got to get going. We've got to get going. Get everyone out of here. I'm going to try and stop the explosion, or at least try and drive them away, or something." So the final decision is then: does does the ship explode? Does the ship? Does does he succeed or not? Or do we leave it ambiguous with them flying back to Earth to tell tales of? first contact there's a part of me that wants to see me wants to see Kane go up in flames like him dying trying to prevent the explosion would be immensely satisfying mm. cathartically speaking but it does leave a rather sour note in the term of internet in, you know interspecies relationships but at the same time you know you know the original story ended with the death of all of the cell knights ultimately in life force yes okay a lot of people die but they do save the day yes Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I'm yeah. I'm I'm happy with. Ooh, it's hard. We no. could compromise, and Kane could get onto the Challenger, and at least partially disable the detonation, Judging. so it wouldn't completely destroy the city. It's definitely not the Challenger. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. The Churchill. Churchill. That he could reduce the damage. That he could effectively reduce the radius of the destruction, mm-hmm. thereby saving the civilization, although crippling them. But going up in flames in the process. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we said earlier that entire section of the moon is on a lift. What he's got to do is set the lift to bring the challenger. Uh, ch- I'm starting me off now <laughs> to bring the Churchill <laughs> to bring the Churchill back to the surface so it explodes on the surface, not in the galleries. There we go. That's a good compromise. Yeah, that's a good compromise. Yeah, I like that. So they're all up on the ship going, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then you just see the, the whole section kind of open up and as it just comes out. And even before it finishes levelling. Yeah, so you'll just get that moment where like Carlson's like, yes. And you can imagine it, like even though they can't see each other, like um, uh, Kane in, in, the sh- in the ship kind of just looking up at them. Like, yes, they did it. They got away. And then, ha-boom. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's a way to end this movie. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> girls and boys. This has been a tough one. We were... We were so lucky last month, we had to do nothing. We had to make no effort whatsoever. This, this has been work, and there's still another movie to go. Yeah, making us work for our, oh, I was going to say making us work for our popcorn, but they've even taken the bowl away now. Oh, no! Damn you Tories. <laughs> Trent! <laughs> I don't think he eats popcorn. I still suspect he's responsible for some of this. Yeah, well, if he talked to us. No, it doesn't taste the same. No? Okay. Uh, anyway, fantastic. So we finally somehow reached the end of this one. Cheers. Um, <laughs> we, we're going to um, take a break. Um, stare at the walls because that's all there is. And maybe go. Bibble. Bibble hey, what? Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you on Friday. Bye bye. <laughs> As always, guys, TTFA. Ba 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 